Okay, well, we're going to go ahead and get started. Thank you, everybody, for coming. I am really, really excited to get to go over this great tool that we've come up with. Um, my name is John Boyer. I'm a staff attorney with Legal Aid of Western Missouri. I'm housed in our Joplin office, and my position is fully funded by the same HUD grant that allowed us to make this website and allowed us to put on this presentation for you. I'm actually going to turn things over to Terry Lawson from Legal Services of Eastern Missouri, and he will start the presentation. I think we might be having a little bit of technical difficulties. Okay, while Terry works on his technical difficulties, I will go ahead and get started and then he'll just jump in whenever he's got everything back up. So as we say, this is a HUD funded web project to provide tenants um, information about tenant rights. I do believe we need to read the bottom part specifically, so I'm going to go ahead and read that. The work that provided the basis for this publication was supported by funding under an award with the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. The substance and findings of the work are dedicated to the public. The author and publisher are solely responsible for the accuracy of the statements. And yep, we can hear you now, Terry. And interpretations contained in this publication, such interpretations do not necessarily reflect the views of the government. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Terry. Okay, sorry about the volume problem. Everything worked and then it suddenly didn't. Uh, switch speakers and we're good to go. All right, to get started, we wanted to introduce uh, all of the state of Missouri and beyond our new website, uh, Missouri Tenant Health, that all of the legal services agencies in the state of Missouri have worked quite hard on to um, make sure that we had something that everyone could use if they were unable to afford an attorney or obtain an attorney, or they just chose not to have an attorney. So this was born out of a, um, a HUD grant, a housing and urban development grant, which is why we had the disclaimer at the beginning that, you know, it's not a direct product of HUD, but they certainly funded eviction prevention work by all of our legal services organizations and also um, EHOC, our other partner, our Equal Housing Opportunity Commission. So what we did is uh, we wanted the goal of having a TurboTax style interview a questionnaire online that a person could use to create court-ready documents that they could file. And with that, we decided to create a splash page, a web page that would allow folks to explore their options and their uh, legal rights and responsibilities as tenants. So this Missouri Tenant Help site is the product of that uh, going on two-year-long project. We continue to reform this and improve it. We certainly would love your feedback as folks that might use this site or you know people that will use it. And our developers are very responsive. So I will say we will absolutely take commentary on the site um, if anybody finds things that they wish to change. So the beginning stage, uh, the, the first page you would see at motenanthelp.org is this slide here. Uh, we could toggle to the live site, but we felt these slides would, would make it a little easier to point things out and features on the site. 
Um, if you're a tenant facing eviction in Missouri or you just have information needs, this will be a good resource. At the top, you would see the four links, home resources, learn and glossary, which breaks the site out into multiple categories that are pretty self-explanatory. The two buttons get started both in blue and red. Those lead to the same thing. What they lead to is the immediate use of our interview process, our tool that I'm calling uh, an eviction defense document engine or EDI for short. And if you put, push that button, get started, it would immediately launch you into what you need uh, to, to provide information that you would use to make your pleadings. So let's go ahead and go to the next slide and we'll show you some other features of the help site. The glossary will contain a, a running list of various uh, legal terms that folks may need to know that would relate to eviction and eviction defense. We will build on that as we add things, we would add things to our glossary, it's like a dictionary. And one neat tool that we will show you later is the first time one of these terms is mentioned in a page, it would also have an underline, a green underline, and you'll be able to hover on that and it'll explain what the word means. Because a lot of these legal terms, you know, have common sense explanations, but they're not always clear to a layperson. So we wanted to make sure that was available. Next slide, please. The Learn page is built in a way that is very mobile responsive. All the pages really are mobile responsive. You should be able to use a, a phone even to view the site pretty easily. And that's one of the reasons we had the Get Started button on the top and the bottom of the front page, because you will always have access to that Get Started if you decide to jump in and build forms. But in the meantime, if you just want to learn about topics, these cards, these little squares, are various topics that you can learn about. We have a search bar that would allow you also to, you know, just search any issue and see which cards relate to that. And we've built the cards in a way that, that we think we've put the most important topics at the top. So especially if you were on a mobile site, you would scroll through the, the things we expect people to want to know about first, and then scroll further down to the less important or the less common questions. Next slide. An example here is a moving out card. Uh, this is to point out that you can select that little down carrot and, and look at the additional information on it. Next slide. And when you click those, you will, you will see uh, that moving out has subcategories. So things related to moving out are within that card. And we have articles and various um, information in the learn section on topics that relate to moving out. And you see there's a read more button to, to see more. We will be updating these uh, various topics as we need to. So if, for example, new topics come up that become important or a law changes, we would add cards to that. And again, we, we welcome feedback to do that. Next slide. The resources page is built similarly to the learning pages in that there are cards or little squares that you can use to categorize everything. But we used resources in a bit different way. This has these dropdowns at the top of the section and you can funnel the resources we provide by type, by the audience that might use them and by location. So if we have a resource that is only found in one county, the location could be used to funnel down to the county. As for type or audience, we have things like in type, you know, is this a form? Is this an address? Is this an organization? In audience, it's is this for attorneys? Is this for lay people? So by using those toggles, you can actually, you know, dial down resources that are local to you or are statewide or of a specific type. So for example, if you just wanted to see uh, forms or printouts, you could use the type filter to do that and uh, be able to get the ones that are targeted for what you want. Next slide, please. All right, uh, we're already to the eviction defense document engine, as I'm gonna call it, Eddie. And the reason is I'm calling it Eddie is that we've looked and looked for a good name for it. And we call it the tool, the filing tool, the form maker, um, but, but really it is a document engine. And by that, I mean, 
This questionnaire is built in such a way that certain questions you'll ask might relate to multiple forms. And so it's been programmed to allow us to take those questions and reuse the answers in other forms a, a consumer or a, a tenant might want. And why we did that is no one likes to fill out forms twice. So this, this thing is a little more uh, than just a choose your own adventure form filler. It's also going to pre-populate certain fields and other forms. And if you need those, boom, off we'll go. So whichever Eddie you remember, whether it's Eddie Murphy, Eddie Munster, Eddie Van Halen, uh, our eviction defense document engine, Eddie, is going to lead the way. Next slide. All right, I will go ahead and cover this and, and then I'm gonna turn it over to Mr. John Boyer, who is, of course, uh, opened, the, uh, opened the presentation. Uh, because I had some audio problems, I didn't take the time to introduce myself, but that's fine. We need the time now for this. Uh, what we have here at the very beginning is the form eviction defense and a form motion to continue because those are the very first things people need to do either to continue their case or start working on defense of their case through an answer or a counterclaim or something else. And it's very straightforward how it lays out. This is a free tool for anyone to use. It will produce PDFs that are downloadable and file, fileable with the court. And it also allows you to save your answer, um, which is great because you can save answer and um, come back to it. So if you get halfway through, you would be able to um, come back to it and finish up, okay? Next slide, please. As we mentioned, the get started button can be hit top or bottom and you would get into the interview itself. Next slide. Okay, uh, John, if you if your mic is open, I'll turn it over to you if you'd like to get started and I will just jump in as needed. Okay, thanks, Terry. I appreciate that. So this is going to be the first page you kind of come to and see it. it the great thing about the website, it's very self-explanatory. If you read the directions, it's typically pretty easy to understand. Just a few things to note. As Terry said, these little... Um, when a word is highlighted in green, a person can hover over that. It's going to provide a definition straight from that glossary. Um, so pretty much what you do is a person would come here, they hit that get started button, and then they would review these directions and hit next. Please note that if, especially if you're like a legal provider, um, having your clients come here, this is not substitute counsel. This and it specifically states that, and it does provide information if they'd like a lawyer on how to get in touch with one of the four legal aid organizations in the state. So we'll go ahead and move on to the next. This is gonna give the person um, some basic information about what they're gonna experience and kind of what they can do. Like it says, your answer is completed, your eviction um, answer form and any other forms that you need, you will need to print and deliver these forms. That's very, crucial. This is not online e-filing for tenants. They have to take those forms to the courts themselves, but it does give them a nice printed document that's formatted well and is easy to read. It also com comes down here and explains some of the things they're going to need for the guided interview. Of course, as many of you may or may not know, you can get through this without this information, but this information definitely helps. So that's going to include the summons from the court, the landlord's petition, the eviction notice, and the tenant's lease. And of course, they're uh, green. Each one is in green, so somebody can get more information about that if they need to. So then we're going to actually get into the questions itself. Of course, it's going to ask who you are, if it's an tenant, an attorney, or someone helping a tenant. Then it's going to ask for the name. John, I'm going to pipe up here too. At each page, uh, I wanted to point out that it does have the sign in or register. So if you decide you want to sign in, oh boy, this is a lot. That's you can do that on any of the pages. And the left side, you know, walks you through uh, on a full size screen anyway. Walks you through the the path that you're on, so you can see what step of the interview you're you're on. 
The third thing is if you need things read to you, that top button allows that. So, you know, if you're having trouble reading it or you just need help, an assistive device to read it, we have that on every page as well. And as you can see here, there's also examples. Um, I know for people who are not attorneys and don't deal with it very often, understanding what the summons is can be a little difficult. So we have examples over here. These are just generic examples. Um, I believe most counties in the state look relatively similar to this, but there might be some variances. Um, so based off of some of the questions, you'll see slides like this come up. Um, typically, the first is, should you file an answer? This is going to provide some information saying, yes, you typically in this situation should file an answer. But as you're going through the guided interview, if you do make certain checks, then it will provide other information. I know a key one that I like to point out is it later on, it will ask, how were you served? And if a tenant marks that they were served by posting, then it gives some information about how if you proceed not to show up at court, then the court can't enter a monetary judgment. It explains that all they can do is enter a judgment for possession of the property. So it gives that little bit of extra information when needed. Like Terry said, the audio reader tool is available. It's available on every page. So people can use that if they need to. Um, we have uh, examples on every page so people can look at that to try to get the information. It does specifically show, as you see here, it's highlighted the defendant's section. It highlights the plaintiff's section. It's typically when it's asking those questions. So as you can see, is your landlord a person or a business? If I'm going too fast or Terry, if you need to jump in, just let me know. Um, this is more of the same asking information about the plaintiff. Is there a second plaintiff? Is there only one? It'll do this for defendants as well. It'll ask if there's an attorney involved. You can put that information. There are also links to CaseNet, and it does explain a little bit about CaseNet to a tenant. That way, if a tenant um, wants to, they can go ahead and look it up. And as many of the attorneys in the call will know, um, as of July 1st of this year, tenants, um, the public has much greater access to Missouri CaseNet, and they can actually see most of the filings unless it's a higher security clearance. So this is really a great tool if you're a tenant or you're an organization that helps tenants that's not attorneys, you can access that information. And it does kind of go, I believe it might have been on a different slide, it goes into a little bit more detail about how to do that on CaseNet. Of course, it's going to ask the county and it provides drop down boxes. Um, it's going to ask for the basic information. When is the hearing? When is the hearing time? That is typically pretty important. I believe if you um, if you put in a certain date, especially if it might be for some reason after that date, the tenant access this, then it might ask might prompt them to file a motion to extend time. Is that correct, Terry? I can't remember if we did that or not. Yes, the purpose here is to get the answers we the, the client needs to realize whether they can file what's called a responsive pleading or not. And responsive pleading is their answer and their defenses, maybe a counterclaim. And if you're past the original return date and time that we've got the little red arrow by, the rules say you need permission from the court, what's called leave, to do that. So this is walking through that process so the client can, or not, excuse me, not client, but user, the tenant can discover whether they need that motion. Yes, and, that, and that's the great thing about the website. Once all this information is plugged in, it's going to provide, and at the end we'll see that, it'll provide sample like documents that a person can print off. It'll have all of their information populated in it, and they can take it right to the court clerks. Um, it's going to ask for the type of eviction hearing. Of course, the two most popular, the rent and possession and the unlawful detainer. Um, I have not seen a landlord action like this bulk, but I'm sure probably in bigger cities, that's probably more common. And then the expedited eviction, um, which is rare, but it does happen. 
And then it's going to talk about the claims and defenses. And it specifically says, states here, the section will ask about any defenses to the eviction and any counterclaims, as Terry said. It, we're just gathering as much information at this point as we possibly can. And then these defenses and counterclaims will pop up in the documents if people answer the prompts correctly. So of course, we're gonna go into, did your landlord violate your right to live peacefully? It's gonna go into a few examples of that. Does the petition say the amount of rent you owe each month? And that states it again, of course, there's that highlighted green for the petition in case somebody is not sure what the petition is and people can choose yes or no. Once they choose yes, and I, it doesn't show it here, and we can go to the live site if we need to, but once you choose yes on that, it's going to populate, it's going to do a drop down box for somebody to type in the amount that's in the petition, and that's where it's populating this information is based off that drop down box. Uh, does the petition separate the amount you owe? This is going to, this is talking about late fees or anything and making sure that's separated. Let's stop here for a minute, John, if you don't mind. Um, one thing we find on rent is that people always, uh, many tenants have objections to what the rent amount is in the petition. And what this guided interview tries to do is break out two distinct issues. One, did you tender rent and it was just refused, but it should have been taken? Um, so your argument is, I did offer to pay it, they didn't take it, versus they're adding things that are not rent to the rent number. So in Missouri, we do clearly break out, even by the court rules it requires, that rent is one number and everything else that might be owed they're asking for, such as late fees, trash fees, junk fees of any kind, attorney's fees, that these other things are broken out separately. And what we find in the city especially, uh, it may be true in, throughout the state, but I think this is important for the audience, is that rent number should be, if it's X rent owed, that should be the periodic rent amount that's owed, whether that's monthly, weekly, what have you. It should not have in it, lumped into it, these other things, because those other things can be charged and can be sued on, but the rent owed is what a person must pay to do what's called pay and stay, court cost plus rent. So we really want consumers and tenants everywhere to know you should nego be negotiating these cases by rent owed, not rent and everything else. Yes, you may or may not owe other fees, but rent and possession cases are about the rent owed, not the rest of those when it comes to the eviction portion. Sorry, I'm clicking buttons. That's okay. Go ahead. Go ahead, John. So this just goes into more of that information. Like I said, it, it's, it's very streamlined once you're in there. And if you're an attorney or an organization that just helps tenants, I encourage you guys just to go in and play. Like I said, it doesn't e-file anything, so you are welcome to play with this as much as possible, but it's pretty streamlined. Once you've answered a question, it'll take you to the next page that kind of follows along with that pretty well. Um, this is going to talk about any other laws. Um, occupancy permits, any other municipal or local laws that would be applicable to your jurisdiction. Um, then it does ask about rent subsidies, um, it explains what a rent subsidy is. Then it's going to ask, did your landlord tell you something that was not true? This is kind of going into... Um, some more of the contract offenses, if there was anything like that going on, they can um, go ahead and answer. And then I believe it does, I believe another drop down box comes in here to ask what the landlord told them. Terry, is that correct? If they check yes on this one? Yes. Okay. That is right. And this is this is going into what else what Terry was talking about before, whether or not someone tried to pay the rent and their landlord denied that or did not let them pay it. That's where we're going into with this. It's going to ask this information. If they check yes, it's going to ask them more questions. 
Um, I checked yes when I was playing around with this yesterday. It starts asking questions. How did how did you offer to pay the money? Um, what exactly did they say? Do you have that communication in writing? So it, it's really good at asking those follow-up questions that normally an attorney would ask if they were interviewing somebody. Um, it explains the pay and stop the eviction. As you can see, that's in green so people can get more information on that. Um, and ask if you would be able to pay that. And then it talks about the defenses some more. It's going to list what it believes that your um, defenses may be. I want to stop there, John, for a sec. This isn't a lawyer, and it's not providing legal advice. So the question people will have is, well, how does it do that? What this is really doing is it is not using a legal analysis to come up with new ideas, but through the interview that the party has suggested these things, it's saying the things you've told me fit these categories. So that's the distinction we wanna make. I mean, it's not doing any thinking, but based on the, you know, what people put in that, that then will describe in legalese as it were, what that defense is. So it's a garbage in garbage out problem in computing if someone put in, you know, crazy things, it would come up with crazy answers. Likewise, if they put in honest and complete answers that make sense, it should lead to the right things. Um, but but bear in mind that we do want everyone to be careful as they do it, that they put in only the things they they definitely have, you know, authority for, they have backup for, or proof for. Those are the, the things you would want to include so that the defenses you submit are solid. Yes, I, I would I would add on to that at this, especially if you are a non-legal service provider and you are helping tenants with this web page, it's very important to stress to them. This is not let's throw every little thing at the wall and hope that it sticks to it. Um, the judges are still gonna do their best to review it, but they're they have busy dockets and stuff like that. So only stick to the things that are actually applicable in your situation. This is going to give some explanations into what the system, uh, what the computer believes that are the potential defenses that can be included. And then I'll ask a few more questions. Um, Here we're asking how we're going to uh, serve this document. In court, when you file a document, a pleading, you need to file it with the court and you complete something called a certificate of service that describes how you provided it to the other side, to the opponent. So here, if, if we know there is an attorney, it then describes <clears throat> how are you going to provide it to John Doe, the attorney. Uh, and, and so that will help, you, as you'll see at the end product, it then describes on the pleading how it was you were going to give a copy to the other side. It, certificate of service is a, is a very easy thing, but you know lawyers that even practice a while Will, will make the error of forgetting to show where they or how they did it. And this is to help a person remember uh, to put that on the filing at the end. And we'll show you that when you see the file ready document. Of course, this is just going into more detail. This person probably checked that they were gonna mail it. So this is the address information. The courts, by the way, will allow you to email fax or uh, hand deliver or uh, mail these items. So if you have, for, for lay people, if you have the email of the attorney, that is sufficient. You would just have to say, I'm emailing it. And once you email it, that is sufficient and considered good service. It's absolutely the easiest way to serve, except hand delivery if you're already at court and they're at court, okay? But I would tell everyone that's lay people, um, getting the email of the attorney if you're going to do that, or of the landlord, in either instance, that is sufficient, and it's by far the easiest way to serve things. So I would certainly advocate that. All right, so the first, now we're going into the actual documents that are going to be generated after a person completes this. Now, I will say, typically, the self-guided interview process takes roughly about 30 minutes. There is a, a disclaimer telling people that's typically how long it takes. But the first document it's going to generate is kind of like just a basic information document. It's going to say what, what you should do, give some important warnings, tell people to file their answer right away, and then kind of give a brief overview of what could potentially happen in the hearing. Of course, 
this can change based off jurisdiction. Like I said, that's why we make sure to be very clear. This does not substitute for an attorney. If you or somebody you know or are helping with this are very, very nervous or still has more questions, they can fill out these documents and still bring them into one of the legal aid organizations. I know I would be appreciative of this. I'm sure most of the other attorneys that do housing cases would too, but this just gets some basic information. Then we're going to go, I apologize, I kind of got like a bunch of boxes going on right now. So this is actually, uh, this is more information that's going to give you, I believe it gives more information about the defenses. We might have, we might have skipped one there. Can you go back a page or did we miss I was like, did I skip? Oh, we missed the front page. I'm so sorry about that. Yeah, there should be a page there or we're out of order on it. I'm not sure. Okay. So oh, then there we it go. is. Yep. Okay. This is supposed to be the first page. Okay. We're just a little out of order. Okay. So this is going to be, of course, the answers and affirmative defenses. This is going to be the first page. Um, of course, we're going to have that little blurb from 517.031 stating that we don't, a defendant doesn't specifically have to file an answer. Everything's um, deemed denied. And then that's where we're going to go into this. And this is going to lay out the specific defenses and the information to explain those defenses or counterclaims to the court. We've got a little bit more. We've got the habitability issues, if those are there. And then, of course, down here, like Terry said, this is that certificate of service. So if, once you've populated that information, say you're sending it to John Doe, all of John Doe's information is going to be in there. If you have his email address, that's going to be in there. If you send it by mail, the address is going to be there. Or if you say you hand delivered it to them. One other thing I want to mention on those forms, um, on each page, you see, we did have the logo and the website that this comes from on every page of the filing. We did that on purpose. Uh, of course, it was a conscious decision. We want courts to know that someone used our website because what we don't want is, is judges wondering, what were these ghosts written by an attorney or did some friend help you? You know, we don't want allegations that someone uh, pretended to be a lawyer and did this. This is, no, I did it myself using this website. And if any judges have a problem with the website or want us to change things or improve things, we would love to get their uh, email, right? We would love to know that that they want to do that. And if they go to the site, there are ways to, to put in information or make changes and request changes. So that's the reason it's always going to be present. And we prefer users leave it on there. Don't try to obscure it so that everything's out in the open. You know, we're always better off if we're open with the courts on this work, as opposed to trying to uh, make it unclear, you know, how did someone create a file-ready document? And there are other forms that can, uh, that it will generate as well. A motion for a continuance. I think this is probably one of the forms. If I was not an attorney, I mean, as an attorney, I use it probably the most out of all of the forums, a motion for a continuance, just to give people a little bit more time to get the evidence that they need for their cases. It's going to ask a few more questions. It's going to explain. This is just going into more of explanation, talking about what's going to, what you're going to need to do. There's more explanation. Here we want to probably mention, you know, do you want to continue or not? Um, and I noticed there's something here we have to change, actually. This is still, we're still working on it. Um, landlords generally have to serve by hand to the person, or then they can also post. So the idea is if, if, you, uh, if you enter the case, even just to continue it, but you were only posted, then that is the issue John brought up earlier. And so at the bottom of that page, John, if you'll put your cursor down there, that bottom half is where it describes, hey, you know, you can get money damages if you go ahead and enter the case. And if you don't, then you wouldn't necessarily get money damages, but you could still be evicted. So this is another place that warns you, warns the tenant, do you really want to do that or not? And we have to check about why it says the tenant through certified mail. I, I'm not sure why that's there. And I remember bringing that up, but we'll, we'll make sure that gets adjusted. 
It also gives another little just warning, just in case. It, like it says, you may decide you you do not need to decide now. Um, you can always talk to an attorney and come back, especially if you've signed in and saved that stuff. So it's really it, it's really very user friendly and really great. If people still have questions, they can go in a, to an attorney, and then if they decide to do this themselves, they can still come back and get this these documents. So this is going to be the motion to continue. It's pretty straightforward. It's going to provide the information for the court hearing and all of that. One important thing about motions to continue that we want the uh, everyone to know is if you file a motion to continue a case before the return date and time. So, you know, on the summons, it has that first that first date called the return date and a specific time. If you make a motion prior to that to re request a continuance, it must be granted according to the case law we cite here. Right now, that is the law of Missouri. There is no option for the judge to say no if you are ahead of that time. It's only if you're late and you ask for more time that there's there's more of an opinion or it's the second date, okay, the second time you come back. So people a lot of times get very anxious about that first time and they're not ready to proceed. They're not ready to go in their case. They're not sure of their defenses. They just got served. But even on these expedited cases, which we call rent possession and um, unlawful detainer expedited, because usually they're, they're heard in 30 days or less, but the judges will give at least another week, two weeks, three weeks, and sometimes longer. So it's always in the best interest of a, of a tenant that if you're not ready to try the case, and rarely would you be, right, get this continuance done so that you can definitely have more time to seek counsel, to file an answer, et cetera. And too many people ignore this, and then they show up, and guess what happens? They just end up getting it set for trial, or, or in some cases, they'll, they'll try it that day. And you don't have to have that happen. A continuance is possible as long as you do it early. Go ahead, John. Okay, so this is going to be that barcode. I believe Terry put this, um, answered somebody's question. The materials are going to be located here for 30 days. If we um, decide that extra materials or anything needs to be uploaded, you can access it via this barcode. So we'll leave that on the page. But now we'll open it up to questions if anybody had other questions. Before we get everything answered too, um, we're also going to take a peek at the live site, I think, if we can do that, John. Um, I did want to go to the live site for a moment. Um, and if, if you wouldn't mind starting in a uh, an interview, that would be great. Okay, we can definitely do that. So of course, like Terry said, we have both the both the get started buttons. Just click on that. It's going to tell you what the interview will do, what forms you'll get. Yeah, here's what I wanted to show you. We did for the slide deck, the main page, but down here at the bottom, John, if you'll put your cursor bottom right, please. Uh, yeah, yeah, there are three right. buttons at the bottom right, share, about, and feedback. So the share button is just like you've seen on lots of websites. If you wanna just give this to someone else, oh, they should see this site. You can share out the link to this, okay? And um, see, tell a friend or share your answer. So, so you could, um, say, well, I got this far and I'm going to share this to my new attorney. And you could then share it to, to a, a link to this interview to them. In every page, it also has, uh, yeah, here we go. It's showing you how to do it. So you can email or text the person and it will show basically where they are, the progress they've made in this site. So that makes it where, you know, you can't have someone else practice law if they're not a lawyer. But you could, uh, you know, send this to someone and say, well, I did my own. Here's what I did. You know, you should do your own. You just can't do it for another person, right? Any individual can represent themselves. You just can't represent them, okay? But that share link makes it very easy to share. The about link, if you'll click that, please, that is where it tells who made this, how was it done, if anybody has a problem with this site, it shows, you know, what the last update was, who the programmers were, okay, and explains how we put it together. So we will have it available at all times that, you know, 
on every page, this is how this came to be. And then the feedback button, most important of all. Okay, if there's a glitch, if there's something else, if you want to, you know, at, at, get questions answered about how does this work? When you click that feedback button and you're in a certain part of the interview, the feedback button is going to, on the back end, tell us this is where they were when they clicked feedback, and then they can ask their question. So it helps refine constantly. The goal will be to make it better and better, right? If, if I didn't understand this or, you know, this doesn't make sense. Now, it will not be a place to say, please answer my legal question, right? Because we can't give legal advice. But if it's feedback about the site itself, those links will be there for anyone. Okay. Go ahead, John. So I just wanted to go. I believe if go the, I'm looking for more help, well. Did the continue work there? No, it doesn't look like it. So we'll work on that. But I believe this is supposed to take you to information about the four legal aids, correct? It does. Yeah. Uh, at, well, I think it actually comes back to the resources part so that okay. you can find the ones you want. Okay. The other thing I wanted us to do is, uh, if you'll go back a page or two, is um, I think it popped open one extra window, so you might have to go to the other tab. Oh, okay. Or just motenandhelp.org to get to the beginning. You want to be at the web page or this? Yes, sir. Okay. Let's go to resources because I think, you know, those were static on the slides, but we want to show you uh, how it works on resources. Give me just a second. I got a lot of little pop-ups. So. There we go. So let's show them how to filter by type and so forth. Okay. So over here, you can filter by type. We got documents. I'm actually going to go to courts. Yep. Audience. You can do attorneys or tenants. And then location. I'm going to be a little biased and we'll put Jasper County. I don't know if this will pop up much for Jasper, but. So, so warehouse information. Right. Since you asked for courts, you know, what courts exist in Jasper County? Boom. We've got them both. Okay. If you want whatever county, it'll have it. If, if you go to resources uh, instead of courts, uh, or excuse me, uh, the drop down being places to get help, excuse me and then hit search. If there were a live spot, looky there. Because Law Mo, uh, where John Boyer works, right, covers that county, that resource pops up. If you have other resources to add, we are always taking new resources. And we can put a card in for things like housing, um, housing organizations, the, the partners, right, that are exist in certain counties. We, we can code it so that it'll only show up if they select a certain county or that it's a statewide resource, whichever one. So I think this is a really interesting way to do this because you can really dry, drill down into the specifics that you want. Last thing, if you would, is show the, um, if you'll show the documents. The, yeah. I'm gonna take out the count. Should I leave the county or take it out? Uh, yeah, try statewide if you want and see what we have there. So we, as we have things that are downloadable, so in other words, instead of just the interview that will let you download your printed uh, documents created by Eddie, these toolkit documents are here that you can download as a PDF file. And we're gonna continue to add more of these as we go so that you can see them. And they're not just from our organizations. These are Heartland Center for Jobs and Freedom out of Kansas City. Um, but we will be able to add more of these as we go. So the booklets that all the legal agencies provide, or if courts give us things, we would be able to put these on. And, and hopefully, like if a, if your local county has a, you know, surviving eviction tablet or, or toolkit or a um, brochure, then we would upload it to that specific county, okay, for that county's users. So I hope to really make this a larger body of knowledge about landlord-tenant law as we go. And we can do that with your help. Okay, are there any other questions? We have about 10 minutes left, I think, of our available time. And uh, I know we had one question that was asked that um, Courtney, I think, wanted to answer live. Um, 
Is, is Courtney on and would like to go ahead and hit that answer? Because I know there was a, a reference to it regarding. I the... hit the wrong button, Terry, but I think I answered it um, in writing. Okay. I'll go ahead and say out loud as well. Uh, the question was, you know, do you have this in other languages? And we do have that on the roadmap of development. We've talked about um, making sure that we have translations. So Spanish will be the first thing we do, of course, if we do one. And I think we are planning to do it. Then we were planning to look at the next most popular languages in Missouri, other than English, to see what else we might use. One tricky thing about translation for us and something we're looking at is there's literal translation, which is sometimes incorrect, and then there's interpretation. So, you know, if you use a literal word and switch it to Spanish, it may not exactly be the same word that a Spanish speaker would use. And so that's what's delayed our uh, translation on that. At the very least, we would use our we would use Google's translation services but that might get us to a more literal translation instead of the fully interpreted translation. And it, we are always, of course, looking for partners that would want to help with that to translate into other languages and interpret the answers as well. And if anyone would want to volunteer for that, we would be very open to it. Okay, any other questions? Okay, well, I am not seeing any, so if there's no other questions, I think what I'll do is I'll probably turn off my camera. I'm probably going to give it till we got about nine more minutes. I'm going to leave it up on that last page for the QR code if anybody still needs it. Um, but you guys are welcome to come and go as you need from there. I appreciate it. Thank you, Terry, so much for speaking and really being probably the biggest driver of this train. He's done great, and we appreciate it. Oh, I'm seeing some questions. Yes, and we will get to these, uh, definitely answer these as we can. So feel free to keep those coming if you have them. Uh, Hannah, I oh, I'm sorry. I thought I had the last slide pulled up, but it went to the first slide. Oh, Wait. you did? Yeah, just a minute ago. We will have it, Hannah. Um, Patricia, as far as your question, that's a little bit more of a complicated question than just a yes or no. Is it valid or not? There's typically a lot that goes into that. Um, so I would encourage your client or whoever you're assisting to probably contact one of the four legal aid organizations before they try to withhold rent. And of course, on this page, you don't need the QR. You can just use the link lsem.help slash using M-O-T-H. Missouri Tenant Help is why we, we you know, I'll probably acronym that to death, MOTH. Um, but it's Missouri Tenant Help, so that's M-O-T-H. Using MOTH is the short link, lsem.help slash using MOTH, or the QR will get you there. And if we drop other resources into that folder in the next few days, you would still be able to get to those. Right now, the PDF of the whole slide deck is there. Um, and as, as some people brought up, just to remind everybody, this is a web series. There will be another presentation next week. Uh, please forgive me because I don't remember exactly what next week is going to be over. And Terry, I'm not sure, are you using this QR code for all of the materials or just the materials that we had today? Just, just this one for now, but I can certainly, you know, I can make it where we have one for all of them. Um, but I did not, yeah, short answer is I didn't have it last week for, for the things last week, unfortunately. Any other questions or comments? We have nothing in the chat. Uh, anything else? Still have about 40 folks online. 